Hello. You cannot see me. Anybody else seeing me or hearing me? It should work actually. Okay. Someone sees me. Okay. Okay, so welcome to the live video chat. So yeah, one of the one of the interesting things about this live chat or about this message is that there is no no goal. It's this isn't in order to. It isn't a method. It isn't something in order to reach uh, something new or to create something new. The in a way one could say the message just points to what already is one could say and this pointing this apparent pointing is already it so it's not pointing to something in order to it's just oneness or no thing appearing as the pointing to itself so to speak so all there is is this all there is is what apparently happens all there is is a live video chat with Andreas, a screen, sounds, a surrounding, that's it, that's all there is, and it's without purpose and without meaning and without sense, and it's empty and full, one could say. It's no thing, it's not a thing. It's timeless, spaceless, wild, free, fulfilled, but for no one. So what we are talking about is not an experience of this, because the, in that sense or concerning that message, that's impossible. That would be part of the dream of me, of the, of within the dream of separation, there's the idea that I can or could experience oneness or that I sh shall experience oneness or shall be able to experience oneness in 
one point in the future and when I reach that experience then I'm fulfilled so what the apparent me is looking for is personal fulfillment personal enlightenment whatever it understands with this term personal knowing personal an experience of bliss an experience of knowing an experience of having arrived an experience of being healed or an experience of wholeness which which in that sense cannot happen or in that sense liberation as it is discussed here isn't an experience and the apparent me might experience one of these things but they aren't what we talk about here because whatever me experiences it remains within that setup of separation and exactly that is the setup of separation i am and out of that i experience something that's the dream as it is discussed here that's that's an illusory setup based on an experience of duality i experience something i experience that's how me lives i experience a situation and the situation and me are two separate things that's the basic experience of i am it's not a it's not a mental setup it's not thought it's not a it's not a conditioning it's it's an energetic setup me experiences itself as something real in separation in contrast to anything else that is also real within that setup there is an unfulfillment the the basic sense it's not necessarily an idea only an idea the basic sense is the situation i'm in what i experience isn't it this can't be it something is waiting for me in the future to make my experience whole this isn't it so me basically lives in that or it only lives in that sense of this isn't it i'm there what i experience isn't it but i'm on a path towards uh, the moment when it's full for me when it's whole for me when i experience this as perfect as good as wonderful it lo it waits for the moment or it lives towards the moment when i can say that now it's finally good from now on forever so to speak the dilemma is or the apparent dilemma is that all of that never happens this will never happen personal fulfillment will never happen in the end it cannot because this person isn't something real personal enlightenment will not happen because there is no real person and there is no real experience or there is no state of enlightenment either which just would be part of the dream of i am so w what we talk about here one could say is or what this message is pointing to again for no reason or what is apparently pointing to is that this whole setup this whole setup i am i experience something i'm separate and i'm on a path towards wholeness that this whole setup is illusory one could say it's a dream apparently there's no reality to that setup there's no separate reality to that setup so seen from that illusory standpoint of me what we talk about is death but as the the mere presence of me is illusory there is no real death of me so even this death of me thing is a story this is all there is there isn't anything else there's nothing to get there's nothing to gain there's nothing to lose it's just this 
which is unknown, which is unknown and which is unknowable, but of course doesn't need to be known, doesn't need knowledge to be whole. This doesn't need an experience of itself to be whole, because it already is whole. So there is no help here, no method, no good tips, nothing I know that you could do in order to become whatever you want, whatever you long for. All that is obvious, so to speak, for no one, is that this whole setup is illusory. Okay, Sebastian is writing. Hi, Andreas. Here is so much fear, despair, hopelessness happening. I have to decide where to live, and that frightens me a lot. There is the conviction that it will be stressful, and I will end up in a home where I will suffer. Okay. Yeah, just okay. That's what apparently happens. So, yes. Obviously, in a way, that's it. There isn't anything else. Sebastian writes, can't escape suffering somehow. Whatever I do, I end up in suffering. <laughs> yes, that too is what apparently happens. Yeah. Yeah. And that too, in that sense, is okay. I mean, it still feels as it feels, of course, but... That's just it. And yes, of course, you can't escape what is. You can't escape what apparently happens. Because that me that wants to escape it is the dream. That's illusory. And in a way, one could say whatever me does in order to leave the suffering. It just me survives on its, its, its action. Yeah, that's just how it is, in a way. <clears throat> if he writes, Hi, Andreas. In Buddhism, they teach that what you saw is what you read. Good deeds breed, good results, bad deeds, bad results. I can also see in my life that what I did in the past had an effect later. So there is cause and effect or not? Can you explain? I mean, cause and effect is illusory as it is the whole thing that you described. I am, I had a life, my past and now. This is the dream that these things exist. <coughs> so, as all these things don't really exist, um, cause and effect um, don't really exist either as a, as a as an own reality or as own realities. I mean, there just is no one. This whole this whole sense that there is someone and that there was someone who did 
who was consciously able to choose this or that action or this or that way that's uh, that's the dream in the end basically it just is what apparently happened or what apparently happens so cause and effect is the experience of cause and effect is part of the dream of I am which experiences everything as a real happening in time as a real ongoing as as separate events moving going on in time and one event after one event after one event that's the dream that there is a real happening and within that dream there is the dream of cause and effect or the experience of cause and effect Sebastian writes good to hear that suffering is okay yeah I mean it just is what apparently happens and that's it there isn't anything else of course It's beyond good and bad, of course, and it's beyond pleasant and unpleasant. What is, is in that sense neutral. Sebastian writes, who is suffering? I mean, in the end, no one. But there may be, apparently, the illusion of there being a real Sebastian in that. Real Sebastian lives in the dream of there is real suffering and I exp I only experience it. That would be the illus illusory setup of separation. I experience suffering. I suffer, which is the dream. Which is okay too. Mika writes, Hi Andreas, how are you seeing global crisis, climate change, overpopulation, extinction of spe species, pollution, etc. Are they just part of illusion? I don't see them <laughs> as something real. I can't, no, I don't have an opinion on that. I don't have... I don't see that as realities, but not because I see something else, but just because that there is no one looking. There isn't the setup of I, I am, and then I experience global crisis, climate change, blah, 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 as separate realities. And in that sense, they aren't part of the illusion, but that they are real things. Are is that's the illusion obviously it's just what apparently happens you could say but for no one i don't have a i'm i'm not i'm not separate from it and i'm i'm not having a standpoint towards that i'm not having a real standpoint towards that and of course as everything else it isn't a real happening. It doesn't really happen. Life chat with Andreas doesn't really happen as something real. It's the unknown. It's just the unknown. 
appearing as that or the unknown being that. It's actually better than appearing. It's the unknown being that. Which is real and unreal, but that is not an illusion. What apparently happens is not an illusion. The illusion is that it is something real. <clears throat> if he writes, so trying to do good and be a good person, not to lie, etc., is futile? Isn't it better, while there is a sense of me, to try and be good in order to lessen suffering? No, it's not better, because implying that it's better would immediately imply that there really is someone who could choose to do better or worse. But in a way, that's the whole dream and that's the whole burden, in a way, that the apparent burden that I am. And that I can do the right or wrong things in order to make my life better or worse. I am is illusory as well as it is better or worse. And that's exactly the, the working mode me is in. What can I do? What makes my life better? And what what causes suffering in a way and that's in a way all it does is working within that setup to create trying to create good experiences and trying to avoid bad experiences and, and with an underlying sense of development that's uh, that's another amazing thing that just me isn't really only thinking oh now i'm creating a good experience but somehow it lives in the dream of development, that somehow every good experience adds up. That it isn't only better, but the, the idea is, or the, the, the dream is, that it gets actually better and better and better, and that it adds up. At some point in the future, it's finally good, that there is a final good. It's not only better, that it's, it's finally good. So exactly that's the dream. I am and I can need to get my life going. That's the dream. In a way, the, the surprise is that it doesn't need me to, to get life going. It doesn't need me doing that. And in a way, me never did that. Me never did do the right or wrong decisions. Me never did get the life going. It was and it is part of its dream, part of its dreamt experience that I am responsible and that I was responsible, that I did all those good deeds and that I did all my failings, my failures. That's the, the dream already. It never did do any of these things. So trying to do good and be a good person, not to lie, may apparently happen. But the idea that I should or that I could consciously do that, it's futile in that sense that it doesn't lead to what me thinks it might lead to, to a real better. But the surprise is that this assumed real better isn't really better. It's just apparently better. It doesn't add up. It doesn't fill the apparent separation. It doesn't fill the apparent gap. It doesn't fulfill the actual longing to find oneness or to find home. It's just only apparently better. Sebastian writes, I dream is appears to be dense. Yeah. Desire to leave the dream. Yeah. 
wish to see what Andrea sees. Yeah. That's what apparently happens. <laughs> the surprise I don't see in a special way. There is no Andreas. So in that sense it's important. There is no way out. But yeah, what you describe is what apparently happens. It was just a longing to become one, so to speak. Which is part of the dream, of course. The longing coming from the sense that I'm separate. Again, one could say, I don't see anything. I'm not there to look. Sebastian writes, how does experience or perception change if the eye dream falls apart? Well, in a way, it's the end of experience and perception in that sense, how, how, it's, dis how it's described here. Because as it is described here, it's the me living in experience. Uh, that's the setup of separation. So when there is no one, there is no experience. There is no no one experiencing something. And same with perception. There may be there may be an apparent function of perception going on, but there is no one living in that as a reality. So there is no one conscious of perceiving. It would just be what apparently happens. But in that sense, the collapse of me is the collapse of that setup of I experience something. And what's left is unknowable. It can't, it's unspeakable. It can't be spoken. What's left cannot be spoken. Not because there is someone not knowing it, because, but it, because there is no one separate experiencing anything anymore what's left is just that <laughs> whatever that is <laughs> so in that sense it's not that experience or perception change to another experience or another perception it's just the end of the end of that the apparent end, that's the change, so to speak. So the experience of separation doesn't get replaced by an experience of oneness. Kiel writes, Hi Andreas. I guess, although me never does do anything, yeah, the attempt to make things better always enforces the me and in a way enforces separation and suffering, right? 
Yeah, one could say so. That that too is what apparently happens. But yeah, that's that's what apparently happens exactly. But in a way, that's all me can do. Me cannot really do not seeking. But in a way, it seems to be that that's the way how me remains alive. So, somehow it seems as it remains alive by being active. It confirms itself in being active, in doing things, in apparently creating effects and in apparently being able to experience its effects and so on. All me does in a way apparently is constantly confirming itself in being real and in a way one could say it needs to do that because it simply isn't real. <laughs> it simply isn't. But so all its work, all its effort in a way is based on the on the need to be alive that's all me needs in a way to remain alive that's the most important thing for me to remain alive in order to at some point in the future experience wholeness experience will experience its final goal personal fulfillment that for sure will come so at least until then, I have to survive. So in a way, it lives in apparently in constant, in the constant attempt to confirm itself as real and to see itself as real and to experience everything as real. Yeah. And it seems to do that by being active. Mika writes, how does this realizing happen? In my case, there is sometimes someone and sometimes no one. Yes. There is also sometimes confusion in body-mind when there is no one. Okay. That's what apparently happens. Yeah. Also confusion can happen to no one. Uh, in the end, I, uh, the thing is that the realizing doesn't really happen. It's the end of the, the death. It would just be death or it's the falling together of this switching. It can't really be, it can't really be said. But it's just the death. It's just the end of me. It's the end of the switching. But in that sense, it isn't a real happening anymore because in that apparent happening, in that death, in that dissolving, what ends is the dream that something is happening. What ends is the setup of I experience something and I experience a real happening. So it's the absolute non-happening. It's the first time, so to speak, when no thing happens. So liberation isn't a happening. It's the end of the dream of a happening or of happenings. And how does it happen? In that sense, it doesn't really, it just doesn't really happen. I can't, I can't say how this happened. 
or how this happens. It just is what apparently happens. <laughs> if it's that, what apparently happens. I think if he writes, I think you mean Nisargadatta Maharaj said that there is no cause for liberation, but in order to increase the chances, one should work to remove blockages like greed, desire, etc., in order to gain wisdom and liberation. A troubled mind will be less likely to realize liberation. Can you comment on that? Well, not well. I I can't really say anything about it, but. I would say that's just the dream in a way because actually it's two messages well I don't know what he underst understands I don't know Nisigadatta that much I just hear a lot about him and somehow it's two messages in a way is you can't do anything for liberation and there's no cause for liberation and in the end I don't know if he said that, but there is no one. But the second message is that there is someone who can or should do anything. So in that sense, what he promoted with that statement is just a, it's just another personal message saying that you can't do anything for it, but it, but somehow you can. So it's already speaking to someone who has no choice. It's already speaking to someone who isn't really there. So in that sense, apparently, he's almost confirming the dream. He's almost confirming you to be someone and the need or at least a suggestion that you should do something. That's the dream, actually. And I clearly wouldn't say anything, and I clearly wouldn't support the idea that a troubled mind will be less likely to realize liberation, actually. I wouldn't say that. And as far as I know, Nisigadatta, he wouldn't have said that in his... Uh, in his later years, so to speak. That there is someone is the dream. Though, um, there isn't a suggestion to do the opposite. There just is no suggestion here. There just is no suggestion. There's also not the, the suggestion to not, to try to not remove blockages and all that stuff. There's just no suggestion at all. This is all there is. There isn't anything else. And the idea that there is someone who, who does do, consciously decide, is the dream. And, there is, and that there is a right and wrong behavior in order to.
That's a teaching in two. Mika writes, what would you say about free will, that it's illusory? Uh, there is no free will in the sense that there is no, no one having it. Ramana says to let the head sink into the heart. How does your message sink into the heart? <laughs> yeah. It's what apparently happens or not. You can't do it. No one can do it. No one has to do it. There is no one. So there's nothing to let sink in, so to speak. There just isn't anyone. In a way, nothing sinks into the heart. What this message apparently does is to destroy the illusion of separation or to to <clears throat> to enlighten that illusion as illusory that there is no separation there is no illusion so it's an apparent destruction of something that never existed of course that's why it's an apparent destruction And all that's left, one could say, is hard, meaning no thing. But it's not something that happens to me, like sinking in until I have it. Me, me will not survive that.
<coughs> Efi writes, what about bringing children to this world of illusion and suffering? Oh, <coughs> I contemplate it a lot. If all is a dream and a dream is suffering, is it smart to have them? Well, well there is no... Well, as everything else, children apparently happen. There is no one really doing them. But there is no world of illusion and suffering. All there is is what apparently happens and that's wholeness. There is no illusion and there is no world of illusion and there is no suffering. It's this and it's whole and it's free already. So it isn't all a dream. All that is, is wholeness. It's a dream that it's not. It's a dream that, it, that it's something else. And so the question, is it smart to have them, already points to, to a better or worse and to someone who could decide. And, but there is no one. And in the end, there are no children. There is no world. There is no real suffering. It doesn't. It just doesn't matter. But there's no need for children either.
Mika, Mika writes, I didn't find this kind of communication or message 20 years ago. Uh, is it coming now somehow more common? Do you have any comment on this? Not really. Actually, it, ha it was there 20 years ago. And it has been there almost, well, I don't know. Uh, that much but it has it's not new it has been there already um, but not very often it's rare and maybe it's becoming a little bit more common but I think it's still rare I mean most people just experience themselves as someone and most people ever did experience themselves as someone but this message in that sense is new it's it's just rare and it has been rare and i don't know what will happen it seems to become more common yeah common already is too much i think but we'll see what happens If he writes, do you enjoy watching shows on television? If there is no subject and object, how this is happening for you? I mean, that's the whole thing, that it isn't happening for me. So I can't say how it is for me. But watching TV happens, it's what apparently happens. And it's, it's what apparently happens, but for no one. So I can't tell you how it is for me. Because oh, it's everything. It's nothing and everything. But it's unknown. It's unknowable. By it already being everything. So it's not happening for me. Exactly that's the dream. That this out there is happening for me. For someone here. But when that someone dies. There is no out there. And it just is what is. So I can't really enjoy it, say that I enjoy it. There isn't watching TV and a, and, a, and a state of enjoyment. This would be part of the artificial setup. That there is the that there is watching TV and here's me and I'm having a relationship to. to watching TV, you know, that I'm taking on a standpoint, that I enjoy it. So when there is no one, that whole setup collapses. And as I said, what's left is unknowable and unspeakable, simply because there is no one left in it. There is no separation left. <clears throat> So one could say, yes, I apparently enjoy watching TV or YouTube or something. Actually, we don't have a, a TV at home. But.
Ify writes, It sounds frightening to walk in the world when there is no one inside. Isn't my mother real, my family, my friends? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, they, they aren't real. There is no one there too. And of course, for me, it's it's it can be frightening because all it, it's unknowable. It can't know it, and its whole its whole world is based on the experience that I'm real, that I'm someone, and and that out there there are other someones who are really persons. That's all it knows, and that's how. It's based on, let's say, all its security, all its sense of safety is based on the sense of there being something real, me being real, and of there being real persons out there. Of course, there is no mother, of course, there is no family, of course, there are no friends, of course, there is no me, there is no I. And yes, it, it is frightening because it's completely unknown. And it's completely not me's experience. Because its whole experience is presence. Being present as something here and now. I'm present here and now. That's the dream. And within the dream there's the assumption that everything out there is present here and now too. Is real. Is something real? Is real separate object things or other subjects, which isn't that anything else than an object? But what? <laughs> What in a way is quite likely that at your mother there is also the dream running that there is something like a mother and that I am that. Mika writes, is there somehow more openness to this kind of message in somewhere in Europe, in Asia, in Africa? But I don't know. There is somehow no time and no place, but somehow there is time and place. Well, a time and place is completely illusory, so there, there aren't real things as time and place or time and space. Of course, this is all there is. There is nothing else. Um, and I don't know if it's if there is more openness to somewhere. I don't know.
in time and space are part of the dream of I am, which experiences as here and now. That's it in this experience of being something here in automatically invents time and space. The first here, at uh, the first now, which is the invention of time, and it's the first here, which automatically implies a there, in a, as an experience, not as a, not as a mind concept, but as an experience thing. I'm here, so there's a there, which is the basic setup of separation here and there, and then there is a now, and immediately there is a before that and an hour and assumed after that so here and now is the dream I am here and now is the dream which invents time and space without that without that first center so to speak there is no time and no space as as realities I'm sorry. Is there somehow more openness when this is communicated in satsangs, etc.? Is it more likely to realize it there? In the end, one one just can't can't say it like that. It's somehow it's um, it's somehow turning it around. Um, there is no you you can't make it you might you can't make it that way because in a way if you turn it that way it sounds like as if it's better to come to to the talks or that come to satsangs though by the way there aren't very much satsangs where this where actually this is communicated it's still very rare so you just can't say like that but that is what apparently happens that hearing this message seems to has an uh, seems to have an effect but it this effect in a way can go in all directions but one apparent effect is that me could die 
Yeah, but on the other hand, it, there's no necessity to it. So it, it, it doesn't need these talks. It might happen anyway. And what I meant with you can't put it that way is you, you can immediately make the same thing we had about Nisigadada. So you can't, um, so you, there's no cause for it, but you can, you can do something, come to the talks to get a better chance which would be just a complete dream that there is someone and that this somehow this someone can consciously create better conditions for its future fulfillment or for its death or whatever exactly that is the dream but yes what apparently happens is people me apparent people meeting this this message and as an apparent result dying but as I say that's a story and it's not needed no one needs to hear this no one needs to come to the talks it's not a method you can't do it you can't do coming to the talks and you can't do staying away it just is what apparently happens or not and what apparently comes out of it is what apparently happens or not. And of course it's not a realization. The last sen I know it's in the end impossible to describe, but it's not is it more likely to realize it there? It will not be realized. What what this is about will not be realized. What this is about already is perfectly realized. It's this. This is the perfect and ultimate realization of what is spoken about. That there will be an additional realization or that there has to be an additional state of realization or an additional happening of realization. That's actually the dream. So what might apparently come out of this talks of this communication is a collapse of that sense of me and together with that collapse the dream that there has to be an additional realization so what this is about for sure isn't a realization it will never be realized what this is about will not be realized Evie writes, can you talk about health, consuming healthy food, practicing yoga, etc.? I see that eating well makes the body healthier. Yeah, that's what apparently happens. It doesn't matter. There's no connection to that message. I can't comment on that. Consuming healthy food, I'm uh, very good in that. And practicing yoga, I'm not very good in that either. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but I'm not really bad at those things. But it, there's just no connection. And in a way, coming back to the idea that there is someone who could choose to do the right or wrong things. If he writes, I mean cause and effect are there. A apparently, yeah, that's what apparently happens. Mika writes, it is somehow difficult to make a good question in this. Yeah, I'm sorry. What would you ask from you if you were me? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I can't. I'm, I can't make something up. And in a way, it's not only that there is no, no answer. There is no real answer. I can't give any answers. But in a way, uh, there, there isn't even a real question. 
Yes. So there is no concerning the, there is no no real question and there is no question which will get a real answer that there is no answer. This is all there is and it doesn't need an additional whatever. It doesn't need an answer. It doesn't need a realization. It doesn't need an additional state of knowing. It doesn't need anything. It already is whole and complete, amazingly as it is. So I can't make up a question. There is no question. There is no, this is not a problem that has to be solved. So there is no need for a question. There is no need for anything. There is no need for an answer. That's, that's the dream, that something additionally has to happen in order to make this whole. That there will be or that there has to be an additional state or experience of arriving, of, of relaxing, of knowing, of transcendence, of realization, of anything. No, not at all. That's the dream, that something else is needed. And this dream, this idea only takes place within that artificial setup of I am. So I can't suggest you anything, not even to ask, there is no right or wrong question. But there, there is no answer anyway. If he writes, when you say apparently, even in the apparent world, you want things to be better for yourself, it's the only sane thing to do, even if there is no me, like taking care of your body. I hope I'm not confusing you. you. No, 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 no. Yes and no. In a way, that is what apparently happens. But on the other hand, there is... No, not really. There is no one living in here wanting to be things better. But what what you might refer to as an apparent functioning. But there is no one doing that and there is no one needing needing a better and there is no one living in the reality with better or worse or good. There is no one living in reality of being here and having a life and working in that so I can really say yes and no to that it's not sane it's not insane it just is what apparently happens but uh, there is no one living in the dream of there being me and there being circumstances that have to change So taking care of my body is what apparently happens, as good or as bad as it happens. There's no one there doing it. There is no one there leading a life. That's a complete dream. And it's the complete dream that I'm needed. But uh, on the other hand, it's a complete dream of I am that I'm needed to do the right or wrong things for me. Me is not doing it. Me doesn't navigate through life. It lives in the dream 
that I have to navigate through life and that I, that I did it. But that's a complete dream. Me never navigated through life. There is no one in here who does do the right or wrong things. It just acting happens. Taking care of a body happens. Apparently. That's oneness. No thing being that. No thing taking care of a body. But there is no body. There is not a body. And there isn't an uh, action taking care of the body in order to live longer or to be healthy. No, that just is what apparently happens. There is no one in there consciously doing something good in order to create a real better. There is no real better. This is all there is and this is the best as it gets. It doesn't get better or worse than this. This is all there is. It's new, it's no thing. And the timeless wonder, oh hi, Amira writes, hello Andreas, I was off by one hour in connecting in this virtuous time scheme. Nice to see you on the appearance screen. Hi, nice to, nice to read you. Welcome. Last few minutes. There is no apparent world. And one could say, Andreas wanting things to be better already is in. There is no need for the better to happen. Well. If you read, just wanted to say thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot too. <clears throat> thanks for joining. Amira writes, everything seems shatteringly unreal 
and yet struggle arises to somehow deal with things even if they are nothing. Yeah, 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 that's what apparently happens. But it sounds a bit like me, me stand, me being there in a way. Oh yeah, especially after our meeting, yeah. It sounds a bit like me apparently being there and everything around becoming unreal, but somehow still me being there trying to operate in that, in that, in that nothing. Everything becoming empty, only empty, not full, not empty and full, only empty. Me is in that. Assuming reality, assuming struggling. Not assuming struggle, struggling into an assumed reality which just becomes more and more unreal. Yeah, I mean, that that's what happens out of that message, apparently. It's the complete breakdown of reality itself. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Me literally facing no thing, which in a way seen from the me is nothing else, is, is only nothing. Seen from the me, no thing is nothing. Yeah. It's kind of one of the most unpleasant things me could face. <laughs> Standing there alone in an em in emptiness. <laughs> Mika writes, it is difficult to express this in language which are dualistic in nature. Is there any other way? Well, there is no way. It just is what apparently happens. And in that sense, there is no other way. There is no nothing else than what apparently happens. And there is no other possibility. So in that sense, there is no other way. But as I say, there is no way at all. Mika writes, thank you for the answers. Oh, thanks for asking very much. Okay, just as an information, uh, feel free to keep in touch, to stay in contact via email or whatever contact details you find on the website. Besides that, there is nothing to take away. There is nothing to do or not to do or uh, there is no one there, there just is no separate entity. Nothing can be found because there is nothing lost in the first place. This is all there is and it's whole and complete and wild and free, of course, for no one. But it doesn't have to be for someone because it already is whole as it is and complete as it is. So. Thank you very much. Much love to Ojai, much love to the to Netherlands and everywhere else. Thank you. Bye.